and all my, what was it, 30 years of doing miniatures was on the movie Cliffhanger, Sylvester Stallone. And uh, as part of the Cliffhanger, we had to build a real cliff in miniature, quarter scale, I think it was, out in a parking lot that we rented specifically for that. And the miniature, I think, was 40 feet high and 60 feet wide. And it was a miniature that the uh, Bell Huey helicopter, UH-1, helicopter goes and tries to fly away, gets to the end of that ladder, and then, then crashes and it swings down and into the cliff. And we did that all in miniature. And quarter, third scale, whatever it was. Well, meant we had to build this cliff and it had to be sculpted so it looked like the shots that had been done in the Dolomite Mountains. So there was a, a real specific type of rock work that had to be done. We built that as a miniature, <laughs> outsized miniature, in this parking lot. And we had shot numerous shots of this helicopter getting to the end breaking its blades, swinging down, crashing into the wall, into this cliff. And the final penultimate shot was going to be a camera on top of the cliff, looking down, straight down at the helicopter as it falls away and hits the base of the cliff and blows up. Yeah, that was all spray foam. And we were assured, uh, and it was a huge, beautifully detailed model, took up the whole width of the parking lot with this big giant pipe frame skeleton behind it and all this chicken wire and sticks just getting the contours exactly right. We had to match a, 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 a part of the, uh, the Italian Alps that were already established in live action. And luckily we had some good photographic uh, material to go, to go from. Um, but we wanted to get a kind of an etched quality to uh, the foam to match the uh, kind of the geological aging that you see in closer shots of the rock surfaces. And uh, it occurred to us that if we sprayed something on the uh, wet foam right after it came out of the gun and did these little strata with a spritz bottle, I think it was a, um, a shellac thinner that we used, that it would eat into the foam while it was still in its green state, you know, before it had, had skinned over and set up. It would eat into it in an interesting way and we could kind of shoot in a line and control it and etch it in these little, little stratified patterns and uh, not really realizing that uh, the flame retardant foam, as a result of having all this alcohol encapsulated into it, was no longer quite as flame retardant as it was touted to be. Because when the model helicopter explodes and catches on fire and falls to the bottom, the whole cliff went up in no time. And it was so hot and so fast that it softened the aluminum Ubangi board up at the top that was mounting Boss's high-speed 70 millimeter camera that they had spent hundreds of thousands of dollars building in-house. And by the time the fire was ex had extinguished itself, they had a tough time finding enough camera to prove to the insurance company that it hadn't even been up there in the first place. Finally, pieces, lens elements and aluminum rings mounting those lens elements were scrounged together enough to prove that, yeah, we, we had a camera up there and it, it caught on fire. I think the body of the camera is magnesium. So that probably made a pretty little flash too. But it basically softened the steel pipes that were holding the thing up. It was so hot and so fast. So we had to throw together another one and it wasn't quite as beautiful, but it met the requirements of the show. And I think Boss did finally collect on the the loss of the camera. And that was over on Maxella, near where we had done Close Encounters, and uh, boy, a number of different Boss Film projects. It was a nexus of, of energy for visual effects for a long time.